No, no, no not to draw this. The job is the thing. But let me try. Let me try. Let me try. Richard, uh, uh, um, welcome. welcome. Thank you for, Thank your, you time. for your time. Um, so, so hopefully, hopefully we're not going to be long. long. On the on call, call with some, some of the advanced, advanced diploma, diploma students. students. Um, so, so maybe, maybe let me try and, try and do this. this. Um, um, so, so essentially, essentially Richard is one, one of our, our very few um, students, students that, that have actually, have actually managed, managed to, to sort of go through the entire, the entire uh, program. program. She's now doing now her, doing her level, six. level six. Most, Most of them normally stop at uh, the global level, global level for whatever, whatever reason, reason that we're still, we're trying, still trying to find, to find out, out uh, so this day. This day. Um, um, she's, she's been, been very, very much involved, involved when, it when it comes to, to you know, you know um, supply, supply chain in the public, the public sector. sector. She's currently, currently um, somewhere, somewhere in Cape Town, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to mention the company name. name. Um, um, she's currently, currently working for Woolworths um, in direct, direct procurement, procurement, if I remember, if I remember correctly. correctly. And, and no. yeah, yeah she, she yes, it's non trade procurement. Non trade. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Um, so, um, so she comes, she with, comes extensive with extensive experience, experience um, um, before, before she started, she started a sick penny. penny. Um, um, she's got her owners and supply chain, supply chain management. management um, and, and yeah, yeah she's she's very, very much passionate about, about you know, you know uh, supply, supply chain, chain everything supply, supply chain, imparting, imparting um, um, knowledge, knowledge and sharing skills. your skills. And, and yeah, yeah, I think I, I, think can, I can go, go on, and on and on. Um, but, um, but yeah, and yeah, I think I'll, all... I'll, I'll stop you from going on and on because we don't yes, have yes. much time, and I do. <laughs> uh, over to you, Atta. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you, Truman. Uh, thank you, Uju. I have had the privilege of knowing Truman um, from, you know, working together back in the day at Amgeni Water, and we've maintained a good relationship going forward. And I've had the privilege, as I said, to see the Supply Chain Academy grow. And I'm very proud of that. And I think you guys should also be very proud of being a student of this academy. Uh, and I'm also happy to see on the call um, Uju. She was one of my lecturers as well, also in the level five. Um, and we used to have contact sessions back then. And so happened that I had to move to Cape Town for my new job at the time. And then we parted ways and I started doing the coursework um, um, by myself then. Um, the brief to me was uh, from Truman to just uh, share with you guys some of my learnings along the way of my SIPs journey and uh, some of the study tips that I've used to um, get through this journey. It's been a long journey. I started a very long time ago, but with uh, working a full-time job and life happens, family happens, etc., um, I think you must just make a commitment and stick to it and slow but sure progress is, is all that you want to see at the end of the day. Um, with the preparation for exams, I think that, that the manual itself and the coursework that you go through is something that you should familiarize yourself with for each of the modules. Make sure that you read it thoroughly. Um, you know, they, they clearly define the important aspects on it by putting the remember note or giving you the examples that they relate to case studies or to, um, you know, examples in the procurement world itself. And you need to pay attention to those markers. But what I think is, is, is important is that as you read through the coursework or, or the manual itself, it's to always relate what you're doing in your current uh, space or in your current work and in your current reading as well to keep up to date with supply chain. Um, because those examples that you would relate to the coursework will make it easier for you to recall at the end of the day. And I think it, it's an important part of writing essays as well, because when you get a question and you sometimes get, you, you, you know, you'll start off strong with, 
giving the background and some uh, relating to the theory itself. But when you need to fill in the space, basically, it's actually what you're going to relate to your work experience and how you apply it in an actual world that you would uh, then be able to fill out the rest of your essay, basically. So that's what's helped me uh, drawing from all of my experience and then relating it to the work that's been read. Um, I believe strongly in past papers. I know that the modules have changed the then the namings have changed slightly and therefore the, the older paper, uh, past papers that's available is not always relevant, but try to get your hands on as much as past papers as you can and past questions. Even in the multiple choice questions, although multiple choice questions are not my favorite, um, I think that if you go through uh, questions that are of a similar nature, it, it builds your confidence and you can prepare accordingly for, your paper, for the modules. Um, but uh, yeah, in, in, in terms of essay questions, I think it's also important that when you go into that paper, read and read and read and read. So when they say read, they mean literally go through all four questions, check if, if there's more than four and you have a choice, read through all of them, check which ones you know the most about, start with those questions. It's about the timing because although you think the, the two or three hours is, is a long time. It does go very quickly when you're in that environment, in the, start, in the exam environment. So make some notes quickly, refer to it if you have to, and, and try and do those questions that you know first. Um, the one thing about essay questions is that sometimes people spot, and I, I'm not a fan of spotting uh, topics and subjects, I prefer to be well prepared. Um, and, and we are at those that level where I think uh, we should be well prepared on, on, on all the aspects of our modules. And then be, you know, go for it and write your best. Um, as I say, relate to your experience and then you, you, sh you should be fine. Um, I'm not sure if I'm covering uh, everything, Truman. Um, so yes, Regatta, I think you've covered pretty much. Um, so mm. thank you so much for that. Perhaps if to... there's questions, yes. I, I'm I'm more than yeah welcome. Yeah, just to I love to talk. How much time so... do you have? Um, so <laughs> I have a lot of that. time for you and for Uja. I have all the time in the world, but I know that Uja's probably got her her. And her presentation and her notes to get through that she needs to cover for today. So let's hope not too much time, but yeah. if there's questions, we can chat through and, and see where we can help. Fantastic, thank you. So maybe let, let, let's do this. So um, I'll, let's just allow questions. So Rick, maybe starting with you, if you've got any questions. So evening to everyone. Uh, evening, Rick. It looks it, it looks like the student count is again on the on the short side. If I look at uh, <laughs> attendance of lecturers and supporting staff and the presence of uh, Richarda, so uh, pleased to meet you, Richarda. Uh, I've actually spent a bit of time in in the Woolworths offices in Cape Town over the years. Uh, one of my Recent colleagues of, is now one of your technical staff on the personal care side uh, down in Cape Town. So, Mr. Herman Singh. Um, so, I'm not too. There, there's, there's a lot of staff, so I'm not too sure if I, I recognize the name. But it's a pleasure uh, so to meet you, Ray. With, within within uh, within our business. Uh, procurement and technical is uh, is critical to make sure that the business runs. So between myself and Mr. Herman, we've spent lots and lots and lots of time together for alternatives and cost saving initiatives and so forth. Uh, um, he's a he's a good man to uh, to know, especially when you have some projects within any sort of division of any sort of business. But anyway, you guys stole him from me, so to come. So you know, I'm still getting over that, but it's fine. Um, 
so enjoy enjoy the benefits of that but other than that yeah look um to be honest uh, is singing a song that is unfortunately very true spot is not something that you can do with cips models uh, it's it's gonna burn you especially when you want to try and do the multiple choice questions uh, you need to know everything if you want to write a paper on multiple choice and uh, and the same maybe to a lesser degree you need to know everything in detail but i think the key the key point that i'm taking away from the the essay type questions is you need to know every concept and you need to have some sort of reference in that question that you can relate to and try and explain so you can you can rephrase it however you want but the bare bones the skeleton of it you need to know what it is you need to know where it comes from in the book uh, and then related to practical examples or the case study and, and nitpick what you need to do to build the meat around the bones. Um, this, is, this is a different type of questioning. It's a different type of uh, marking from what I've seen from CIPS versus other institutions. Um, and yes, we're busy with, with module one for level five. And I'm finding I'm finding it not difficult as uh, per se, but uh, especially the HR part of this is, is new to me. This is not a, a area that I'm an expert on or really have a lot of experience on. But the information that is shared in module one so far, you can see the difference between L4 and L5. There's, there's a drastic shift. In, in context, in wording, in intensity almost from level four to level five. And, and this with, let's call it the first chapter, you, you also see that type of uh, shift. So I've spent um, a lot of time in the last few uh, days on chapter four, uh, especially the first two sections, 4.1, 4.2. I've read every single word um, in chapter four, 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 four point one and four point two, um, and it's it's information overload. I'm I'm not gonna lie, um, especially because I have very little to to link to it. I think the one critical area, and and, and you know people in in the managers roles can can comment here, yeah? especially when you go through a recruitment process yourself or being interviewed. I see so many flaws in, in the system compared to what the books say. Yes, we've got practical experience. Yeah, that's wonderful. So you can have something to, to put down your pen to paper. But if you really go through the intensity, that chapter four approach recruiting with and the type of skill sets that needs to be developed in certain aspects of a business or a department etc cetera, etc cetera. yeah i i don't really know how many business businesses in south africa anyway can put up their hands and say we do it exactly like this or we do it with this type of intensity i i mm -hmm. really don't feel that that is something that i can say is being practiced continuously that that was my big sort of concern but also my takeaway to look at when i go through my next recruiting phase either being on the interview side or um, on the side where we actually need to put someone back in a new role or whatever the case might be yeah that's very interesting rick um you're quite right there i couldn't agree more so there's really a lot to learn and uh, you get to realize that you know you, you, when, when you compare your role and what happens in the environment and even what you've just mentioned looking at other uh, business functions like hr and sort of uh, comparing that to the international standards what is being practiced locally then you get to realize that you got a lot of work to do 
there's a lot of yeah up. and sometimes you ask yourself if um <laughs> is it being done deliberately or we just you know negligent or not informed as far as leadership is concerned <laughs> Yeah, and yeah, but I think it's sometimes it's you know we learn we learn about all of these things in 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 literature and in books etc. And that's what we would aspire to be. Trust mm. me, in practical, it's never what we get to be, because even in my current role, when I moved to Woolworths, they were for me what a world class supply chain function would be and should be. And I thought that every challenge that I experienced, you know, in my public sector days would be resolved and I would have <laughs> fantastic processes in place, um, you know, smooth, a well run smooth um, uh, procurement uh, function that is respected by the entire business, et cetera, et cetera. And then you get into an actual business and it is very different. Um, you know, across each of the businesses that I've been in. It is world-class because of the fantastic product they may have, not necessarily the internal processes. So let's not confuse ourselves about what yeah. we learn and what we actually have to apply in, in the business world. Very different sometimes it is what, have, what works operationally. Um, you know, people adjust and, and make changes to, to what's out there to just make it work and make it easy. And I'm not saying it's always right because there, there's a lot of flaws in, in, in our business as well. And when I talk our business, it's the Woolworths business, uh, but we try and improve every, every day and try to be better. So yeah, sometimes you may find things that are totally unrelatable and sometimes it's unrelatable because it is uh, subs based in the UK um, especially the labor part of it, you know, you need to bring it back into the South African context, et cetera. Um, so you, you've got to do the additional uh, reading if, if need be to link it up. But it's, um, it, it's always, it's, it's good to know what's out there. It's good to also relate to in what your practical experience is. But it's, as we say, what we aspire to be in, in theory, but doesn't happen always. Absolutely. Yeah, I think the finding the balance between what is practically possible, yes, that's very important. But also, I think one one thing that we we forget um, in operations locally is we have it. We lazy people. We lazy people. We want to copy and paste someone else's SOPs and other people's behavior. We, we don't really think or own our own processes as, as what it should be. It's the easy way out. You know, it works somewhere else. We, we just go down this route. Um, so we, we copy and paste sometimes with the wrong idea and the wrong intent. Um, and and that, that is a concern. And yes, we need to make sure that everything is tailor-made, but in order to do a proper tailor-made fit or custom fit you need to know everything otherwise you, you're gonna miss you're gonna miss some essential stuff um uh, this the chapter four this part that i've read in depth it's been an eye-opener to me to be to be quite honest and yes not going to apply everything tomorrow 50 percent of this i'm not even going to remember but um but definitely some key elements that that'll be be going with me um, forward, uh, definitely. Great to hear that. Thank you, uh, Rick. Thank you, Richard. So, Dr. Uju, do you want to come in? Is there anything that you'd like to add? Okay, thank you, uh, uh, Daniel and um, Richata. Um, Daniel, you went through um, lesson four today. As I, sorry, you went through lesson four. Um, were you able to go through the past questions to see if there's any question that relates to lesson four? No, so I haven't gone through the question paper. I've only gone through the text, um, the first two sections within chapter okay. four. 
in depth. So that's what I've managed to squeeze in between our last conversation and today. No, I quite understand. Uh, I'm sure um, uh, we're all under pressure anyway. Okay, um, for me, I would suggest that um, the application for that lesson four or chapter four will be better when a question is tried. Um, if, uh, since you are not able to do that today, it's not a problem. We need to look at a question to understand how to apply that particular concept in answering a question. Um, I remember those days with Rejecta, we have to scan through every past question paper for a particular uh, topic. Then we tr study how they ask questions around there. We go to the textbook to pick up how to answer. I also make her to write those essays and submit to me. Uh, that is the only way uh, she will keep practicing and she will be able to do it on the exam day. Because if we sit and talk and she goes home tomorrow, she's going to work. Some of those things she will forget when she enters the exam hall. So that practice of writing those things, some of some with a, a solution, we, she will try it, we discuss it. Then we go to the solution to see if there are things that we are missing. So uh, I think that was what helped uh, both of us. Um, that way you can really understand what they are looking for, what should be the content of your answers, how many marks are what, uh, uh, how many marks are awarded to a particular question will determine how much they expect you to write. Some questions can be split into two, nine marks, 16 marks. There may be one question, 25 marks. They ask you to use theories to support whatever you're saying. So if we keep going around it, we can be able to, we need to practice it. Once we practice it and we understand how these things work, then we can be able to say, okay, oh, this is actually what they are looking for here. So in my suggestion will be once you're able to make out time and look at case studies and past question papers, then we bring it to the table and all of us can see what we can do around it. Rijata, would you like to come in here? Yeah, I agree, uh, Ujo. You know, those you can read all you want to your, your manual, which is a, a large part of what you should be doing. But the application is very important. And that, that practicing of those questions. And as I said, although the modules may have changed and there's, you know, not many past papers based on these new modules and the new formats, but um, I'm sure Truman has the, the, the previous um, past papers and I think I can dig up some as well. Um, and and it is important. It. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll have a look. In fact, I just opened my folder, but I see that on my laptop, it's, it's not yours. So it's probably on my hard drive. I'll look through it and I'll drop you an email with, uh, with them. But it's important to, as Uju says, go through those questions and identify which aspect of the module they, they, they are testing and how they're testing it. Um, and, and then as she says, put those points down, brainstorm it amongst each other. Uju and I used to go through and say, I think this is what they mean. And these are the, the types of um, applications we can do, or this is what we can relate to it. Go through practical examples in terms of what's happening currently, if we can relate to it as well, to try and help through answering those essays. The essays, I think, uh, uh, a bit challenging because yes, you've got to find something to write for 25 marks or, 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 or value to add for 25 marks, which sometimes can be challenging. And you can only do that by application. Yep. All right. Thanks for that, um, Richard. Thank you, Uju. Um, so we've got Innocent, I'm not sure if you would like to say anything, Innocent. 
questions, comments, innocent, just uh, got admitted at an MSIPS as well. Uh, when was it innocent? Last year or the year before? <laughs>